you don't believe they love you because you think they're supposed to love like you love. Hello, beautiful soul family, and welcome to A Mother's Touch Radio. I am your host, Coach Susie, the PTSD Confidence Coach, and welcome to Loving Yourself Unconditionally Beyond Abuse. You don't believe they love you because you think they're supposed to love like you. What do I mean by that? A person could love you, and because they don't express love how you express love, you believe it's not real. I teach people the importance of knowing their own love language and their partner's love language so they can meet the needs of each other. A person does not have to love the same way you love for you to experience a divine depth of love. My top two love languages are quality time and acts of service. Suppose I met a man whose top two were words of affirmation and physical touch. To meet his needs, I would need to affirm him and touch him, which I have no problem with because I'm a very, you know, uh, physical touch is number three and I'm a very touchy-feely person. I love hugs and, you know, like, I mean, I do. I love to rub on my man and, and things of that nature. Like, I'm very touchy-feely, but that's not necessary for me. You know, like quality time and acts of service are my top two. And, you know, words of affirmation are just like, you know, I'm proud of you. I appreciate you. Thank you. And things of that nature. And, you know, conversating with him, being a, communica a communicator with him, you know, and not shutting down my feelings and things of that nature. Um, you know, so that is, that would be his love language. But in the same token, I deserve to have my needs met too. And so, you know, I have often found myself in these relationships where for one, I didn't get to know the person and tell the person about my love language. And yes, you know, you know, spiritual people, yes, they, they automatically know, right? They do. You kind of automatically know, but in the same token, I'm not going to I'm not going to give you more than what you're giving me. I'm just not going to do that because that means that I will forever be meeting your needs only. I've done that before. I've had that experience, you know, in my relationship with my children's father, you know, we, we were young when we met, I was 19, he was 20 and I didn't know any of this stuff. You know, I didn't know about love languages or any of that. And I, the more that I started to heal and started to grow, you know, I would express my needs, you know, and um, because I hadn't always done that in the past because I didn't believe that my needs deserved to be met. And so, you know, once I started to heal from like my childhood mess and all that stuff and seek counseling, you know, I started to express my needs and I started to read about the love languages and I started to, you know, take the quiz and then I would tell him, hey, you know, like, my my love language is you know acts of service and quality time and he took the quiz and you know and 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 told me what his were and even though i told him what mine's were he still would buy me gifts and that's like that's not my love language i like quality time i like for us to spend time together you know and what i had to learn and what, what was the hardest thing is that and that's that's why i know now I will stay abstinent and single because if I tell you once what my needs are and you are hell bent on not meeting them, then I know you don't care. I know you don't care at all because I'm going to, I'm going to meet your needs. I have no problem with doing that because I'm already doing that for myself. And we all have, we all have some of the five, but then we have top two that we really to, do need. And like words of affirmation is number four on my list where and gifts is number five. And so I'm already doing that for myself as a single person. You know, I qu spend quality time with myself. I, you know, do acts of service for myself. I touch myself physically, you know. I, um, I speak affirming words over myself. I have a self-love affirmation that I, that I read over myself every single morning. I'm constantly affirming myself. You are enough. You are good enough. You know, things of that nature. And I also will occasionally go buy myself some things, go take myself on a trip, you know, but um, those are not like necessities for me. Those last two, you know, well, I wouldn't say trips. I love taking trips. So like trips kind of is a necessity, but those are not gifts. You know, gifts are, you know, clothes and 
goodies and stuff like that. That's what I think gifts are, you know, like um, I, I think maybe trips could be acts of service. I don't know. But, um, you know, I'm already doing that for myself. So I have no problem with doing that for somebody else. But once you show me that you're not going to meet my needs, then there's what's the sense of me being in that relationship? What is the sense of me even pursuing something with that person? Because they are letting me know right then and there that they are not prepared. and They are not the one to take. They're not going to meet my need. So why would I even stay in that situation? And I think a lot of us get in these situations and we're begging for someone to meet our needs and they've already shown us that they're not going to do that. You know, they're not the ones that are going to do that, you know, and, um, and it's okay to just walk away from that situation, you know, and so acts of service, I believe probably differs for, for everyone, but acts of service for me is like, you know, filling up my tank or cleaning my car without me even asking, you know, going out and it's like, damn, you know, filled up my tank. Oh my goodness. You know, like that's acts of service for me or like waking up to coffee made just the way I like it and receiving like a text message out of the blue in the middle of the day from my boo, like, you know, just thinking about, you know, like you were just on my mind or something like that. Like I love shit like that, you know, or like FaceTime calls or if we live together, you know, well, I don't work outside of the home anymore, but when I worked outside of the home, like coming home to a clean house, you know what I'm saying? Like that's acts of service for me, you know, um, and quality time is just quality time. It's time together, away from work, away from social media, you know, just like, just enjoying each other's time. And like, the guy that I had met in 2019, like, he, okay, he didn't do my coffee or anything like that, but he did like the quality time and the acts of service, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, we spend time together. Now, he would be on his phone and I'd be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we together, like, can you put your phone down? You know what I'm saying? Like, we're together. Let's spend this time together, you know? Um, but again, you shouldn't have to tell people over and over and over again how to treat you, how to meet your needs, especially when you're meeting their needs. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I took care of him. You know what I'm saying? I would take care of him. He, need, You know, like, I would make dinner. He could come over. I'm going to give him massages. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to lift him up. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, when he crawl, I'm, I'm an answer, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm here. I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> well, I'm doing stuff. I'm working on my business, but I got the time, you know what I'm saying? So like he would FaceTime me when he was at work, you know what I'm saying? Like he was very good at that. Like he would, he, he had no problem with calling me and FaceTiming me and we spent time together, you know, like we spent a lot of time together. We would, you know, we would go to the pool and hang out, you know what I'm saying? We did this stuff together and, you know, but you know, he he didn't like to be faithful <laughs> you know so <laughs> it was like um all right you know um there you know i have i have to have that because you know i'm a faithful person i'm not going to cheat on you and i expect the same thing you know i don't expect you to love in the way that i love you know because i do want to be able to meet your needs as well you know what i'm saying like you know if, it, if it's physical touch if it's words of affirmation if it's quality time if it's acts of service like let me know that. But I think a lot of people don't even know their own love language. So they can't even communicate that. And then too, a lot of people, because they were abused as children and their needs were not met as children, they fear telling someone else what their needs are, how they need, you know, how they need their needs to be met. Like, what are their needs? And then a lot of people think that attention is love. Well, quality time is, you know, all of that is wrapped up in quality time. You know, you get the attention because just like I said, you know, when we were spending time together, you know, I put my phone down, put your phone down too. You know what I'm saying? Like social media and work should not be, should not give your, get your attention when we're spending quality time. And that's what quality time is for me. You know, um, it's not just about attention, getting somebody else's attention because attention by itself is not love. You know what I'm saying? But attention is in quality time. And that's very important, you know? And that's what I used to say. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm being attentive to you. Why not be attentive to me? Like my phone, you know, like I will put my phone, I will put my phone on do not disturb. You know what I'm saying? Like when we together, I'm on do not disturb. You know what I'm saying? Like he got my time right now. You know what I'm saying? So and it's just only fair that I, I receive the same thing when, when it's quality time, when I'm asking for your quality time. That, that may not be your love language, 
but that's my love language. And if I'm meeting your needs, then I deserve to have my needs met as well in a relationship. And I think that's why a lot of relationships fail because we're not willing to meet each other's needs. We just want our needs met. And that's not fair to the other person, you know? So, and although my top three, my top three may differ from my partners, it doesn't mean that I don't know how to provide for his needs. That don't mean that because I'm doing it for myself. Like I said before, holistically, I'm already doing that for myself as single. And that's why I encourage so many people to remain single until you are holistically happy with your own life. You cannot be happy with another person if you are not holistically happy by yourself. If you're not already giving yourself that attention that you require quality time, if you're not already doing acts of service for yourself, if you're not already loving on yourself, touching on yourself physically, if you are not buying yourself gifts, if you're not, if you're not affirming yourself, that anybody can really trick you into a relationship, right? Because somebody could come into your life and just start affirming you. And because that, because you think that that is the only thing that's required, they can manipulate you easily, you know? Because they see, they see that you are lacking, that you are looking outside of yourself for the love and attention. They see it and you're easy target. You're easy target. So, you know, that's why it's very important for you to have a happy relationship on your own so that when these people come into your life and they're, you know, they're, they start displaying, you know, I guess people call them red flags, you know, but um, I call, yeah, I guess they are red flags, but abusive tendencies, you know, it's like they're seeking to <clears throat> control you or, you know, control you emotionally, really. Really, that's what it is. And when a person can have control control over your emotions, then they can control you and everything about you. And it's so important for you to love yourself and to know, you know, like, for instance, I have no problem. You know, like I was, um, you know, I, I wanted to vibe with this one guy that I had met on social media and, you know, reached out to him. He ignored me, you know, um, you know, still was on, you know, still was on his page, like in his stuff or whatever, you know, and it's like, I don't have, I don't have no problem with giving you attention. You know, I don't have no problem with giving you attention. I don't have no problem with being there for you and affirming you. But when I tell you that, you know, like, and I don't need all your attention, just, you know, if I comment on your post, just acknowledge me. That's all. Hey, you know, I mean, anything, you know what I'm saying? But you're asking me to give you attention but you don't want to give me any. Like, you you can't be asking for stuff that you're not even willing to give out. Like, if you're not willing to give it, stop asking for it. Because, you, yeah, you'll come up on somebody that's going to give it to you, but guess what? They're not holistically loving yourself themselves. I guarantee you that. I can guarantee you that. And what they're going to do is they're going to try to manipulate you. That's what they're going to try to do. Because they see, oh, I can give him attention, and, and then I can he'll do anything. He'll do anything for me. No, no, you don't want nobody like that. You want somebody that's reciprocally giving and reciprocally receiving. Like you want that, that watering relationship. You know, I pour into you, you pour into me. I pour into you, you pour into me. That's a real relationship. That's a healthy relationship. I don't want no more one-sided relationships where I got to tell you this is, you know, like if we, as long as we established that in the beginning and that's, you know, that's what I'm learning too is that I need to be friends with you first. I need to be friends with you first. And I'm not just talking about on social media. You know what I'm saying? So many people are cool with just being friends on social media. And it's like, how, how am I getting to know you? Really, like, how am I getting to know you? This is somebody, this is, this could be something that you're portraying on social media. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need to get to know you personally. You know, like, let's talk on the phone. Let's have conversation, like real conversations. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I think so many people are fearful of that, are fearful of like putting themselves out there and getting to know somebody because guess what? It might not work out. It might not. But when you have that stable and holistic love of yourself, you're like, okay, if it don't work out, it don't work out. Like it's not the end of the fucking world. You know what I'm saying? Like I done been here before. Like I'm not afraid anymore to love. You know what I'm saying? Because, okay, if, if I don't get it back, all right, it's good. I saw it. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, okay, I'm not going to get it from you. You're not the person. 
That's it. Simple as that. I shouldn't have to continuously tell somebody like I had to do in my first marriage. Like you're never going to have to sit up there and, and train somebody how to love you. If you tell somebody once, hey, this is my love language. This is what I, this is what I need for me to be fulfilled, you know, not only in this relationship, because I'm already doing it for myself, but for me to be fulfilled in this relationship and to continue this relationship, I need my met, needs met too, you know, and, and a lot of people will say, well, there shouldn't be any expectations in relationships. Yes, there should from the very, very beginning. From the very beginning, we need to discuss our expectations and how we expect our needs to be met in this relationship. Because if I'm already doing it for myself on my own and you can't do that for me, what do I need you for? Really, what do I need you for? I, I don't need a man just because of his penis. <laughs> like I wanna be able to grow with a man. I wanna be able to build with a man. I don't just need to be fucked. Like I don't, that's not something that I'm looking for, you know, and so, I don't, like I said before, I've said this before, I don't just need a warm body in my bed. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I want, I want to provide a safe space for him. And I also need a safe space. You know, I want to provide a stable place and I also need a stable place, you know? So, um, there are things that I expect and that I require. And so that's why I really stay single and abstinent because, you know, for one, a lot of men take offense to that when I'm like, I'm holistically happy. Cause so it's like, Oh, you don't need me. That's not saying that. What I'm saying is I'm holistically happy on my own. So if you're not already holistically happy on your own, then we're not going to work out because you're going to be looking to me for some happiness that you haven't even found inside of yourself. And then when I can't give it to you, you will go searching outside of our relationship. It's just the fact of the matter. When a man or a woman is not happy with themselves, they will try to make you unhappy by one, trying to make you jealous with another man, with another woman, you know, or, um, and then that's going to have you all messed up and like, damn, you know, focusing on them and damn, like, what, what do I need to do? And, and, and trying to please them in ways that you will never be able to do, because guess what, sweetheart, they are not happy on their own. And you, that's fighting a losing battle. So it's best that you just go ahead and walk away from that situation, you know, and let that person work whatever they need to work out within themselves um, to become happy on their own. Because what I say is like, you really should not be looking for a relationship if you are not happy with your relationship, with the relationship with you. You have to be happy on your own first. You cannot be expecting for somebody to make you happy. A person can only add Another person in our lives can only add to our happiness because they add value. They are beneficial to our lives. But until you are happy on your own, you will never be happy in a relationship. So, um, you know, I, I think it's very important for us to discuss our love languages in the beginning, you know, during dating, you know, and, and, and this is what I'm doing going forward in my life. Like, hey, let's take the love language quiz together. Although I've taken it, I take it for myself all the time. Let's take the love language quiz together because I want to know how to meet your needs. And I want you to know how to meet my needs. Because if that, if that can't happen while we're dating, because it should happen in the dating stage. And then we move on to the physical stage. And that's when we have physical intimacy. But if we can't, if we can't meet each other's needs in the dating stage, then we don't need to be together. Because if we get into a relationship, it's not going to get any better. I promise you that. So, um, but a lot of people this in this day and age, they don't want to date. They just want to have sex. So, um, you know, that's that's the main reason why I'm, I remain uh, abstinent and um, single, you know, because a lot of people are afraid to date in this age. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, drop your comments. Um, share whatever it is that you want to do. I hope you got some value out of this podcast today. I uh, just want to tell you a little bit about A Mother's Touch. It is a community organization that provides loving support and mentoring for any person who desires to live a healthy, happy, and holistic life with a mental barrier. The organization also assists men and women financially who are leaving domestic violence relationships and having a hard time financially. The organization and loving yourself unconditionally beyond abuse movement was created based on the desire to be the organization I needed when I found myself struggling financially after leaving in an abusive and unhealthy situation 
um, in 2015. So I just really want to be the person that I needed for the people out there that are struggling. Um, the organization is a proud collaborator with other organizations in my community who are assisting men and women um, with becoming the healthiest and greatest version of themselves as parents and co-parents, you know, because we have a lot of um, broken relationships. We have a lot of broken marriages out here and kids are involved and we just need to make sure that we are the healthiest and the, the greatest version of ourselves for our children. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a relationship with the other parent, but we need to be the healthiest and greatest version of ourselves for our children so that they can grow up to be the healthy and happy and holistic adults who have a healthy love of themselves so that they can have a healthy love of other people. You know, and I think that that's what we're lacking in our world today is that we didn't we weren't raised on a healthy love of self and others and so we're out here hurting people you know when we should be loving people as as we love ourselves you know so and that goes back to the the old adage you know how can i love myself how can i love my neighbor as myself when i don't even love myself you can't do it right because if you're abusive to yourself if you are hurting yourself if you are neglectful to yourself then you'll do that to somebody else it's just the fact of the matter. If you are interested in donating to our cause and mission, or if you are someone you know is in need of financial assistance, please visit a motherstouchinc.org. All do donations are greatly appreciated. And y'all know what time it is. It is the end of the program. I thank you guys so very much for being here. And I am going to take us out with a prayer of love. So Dear, dear universe, dear universe, I love you so very much. And I thank you for being my rock, for being um, my source, my stability, for, for allowing me to build my life on your love, on, on the stable foundation of your love and, and, and providing me with the strength to remain abstinent and single in this season until that person comes into my life who is able to provide for me on a holistic level in the same way I'm able to provide for him on a holistic level. Um, I'm satisfied with you. I'm satisfied with you. If this is all that there ever will be, this is always enough. It's always enough. Yes, I do have my sad, sad days because yes, I am a human and yes, I would love someone to share my life with, but I'm not going to accept anything less than what I'm already given myself. So um, I thank you. I thank you, universe, for um, being, being the love of my life, for being my truest and greatest confidant, for being my best friend, for being my greatest supporter, my lover, and my man. I thank you for being my provider, my protector, my way maker, for being my anchor in the roughest of seas for being my shelter in times of storms. I thank you for continuously giving me the strength to continue on the days when I've had enough and I just want to give up. I thank you for constantly just pushing me through, constantly pushing me, pushing me to be my greatest self, to know that it's your love that's continuously carrying me through. That's, that's, that's getting me to where I need to be. I thank you. You have my heart. You have my mind, my body, and my soul. It all belongs to you. I am a dedication. My heart is dedicated to you. And it doesn't matter if I'm experiencing famine or whether I am feasting. It doesn't matter if I live in abundance or in need. Doesn't matter if there's sunshine or rain, joy or pain. You got me, you got my heart. And it is a privilege and an honor to share your love in this form. It's a pleasure to serve others to know that they too are worthy and deserving of a love that's so deep, so satisfying and so fulfilling. Doesn't mean that there's not hurt or pain involved because what I have learned is that you can't have the love without the pain. You can't have 
the joy without the pain. You can't have the sunshine without the rain. It's all a part of it. But you gotta have someone that's just as committed as you are. That's what I learned. You gotta have someone that's committed to their own soul, just as you are. That's the only way it's gonna work for two people. You have to be our foundation. You have to be our center on our own before we even get together. You gotta be that stable rock that we stand on. It's not gonna work any other way between two people. Because if one person is standing on a sinking sand and another person is standing on solid ground, that other person is fearful, they're shaken, they're, they're not firm in their beliefs. They're not firm in their own love. They're not firm in their own values, their own morals. They're easily manipulated and controlled and their eyes and their hearts, they wander. So I thank you. I thank you for keeping me strong and self-controlled and to know that I deserve everything that I'm currently giving myself and to never again settle for anything less than that. I love you with everything that I am and everything that I'm not. <laughs> I love you and my strengths and my weaknesses and all of my imperfections. I think I'm thankful for the light and the love of your high vibrational energy and it continues to help me to rise above the energies of hate and indifference. And it continues to help me to protect my energy from those who try to emotionally manipulate and control me. I'm thankful for this space today, for you, for your love. And when you say, mm -mm, no, don't go any further. They're not ready for you. They're not the one for you. It's not time yet. Keep molding and shaping me. Because although I'm a work in progress, I'm also a masterpiece right now. I'm thankful for this community that you have placed within my heart to build, to help other people to overcome doubts and fears by loving themselves unconditionally beyond the abuse that they experienced as a child. I love you with everything that I am. You are it for me. And I know that you have the best for me. You have my back and you only want what's best for me because that's what I deserve. I don't deserve abuse and hurt and pain, not purposeful hurt and pain because we're gonna have pain when we're, when we're walking this word road of purpose, but people who purposely try to hurt you, it's not love. And I thank you for opening my eyes to that fact. I love you. I love you so much. There are not enough words in the English dictionary to describe how much I love you. And I thank you. Um, um, may, I am abundantly blessed above all I could ever ask, think, or imagine. I am grateful and thankful for another day. Let's rock it out. Let's get her done. So be it and so it is. Amen. I thank you all for being here. I want you to go out. Have an awesome, amazing, and beautiful day today. From my heart to yours, as always. Namaste.